Welcome learners to today's lesson of Linear Numeric Patterns. So let's start off our lesson with a did you know. So did you know that time also works in a number pattern? Every hour there are 60 minutes that pass by from one hour to the next. This means that our time has a constant interval of 60 minutes and therefore creates a number pattern that will never come to an end. Isn't that interesting? So, let's look at today's lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to investigate and extend numeric patterns, find the difference between numbers in the pattern, write rules in words to describe relationships between numbers, and represent numeric patterns in tables and algebraically. Let's look at today's concept map. So our focus is on numeric patterns. We are going to be investigating and extending numeric patterns. Then we will focus on representation of numeric patterns, where we are going to represent it in tables and algebraically. Then we are going to be solving for problems, where we are going to solve for complex problems involving linear number patterns. Let's start off with some pre-knowledge. So, you should know or should be able to investigate and extend patterns within numbers and also describe the pattern in words. Let's focus on some practice. Investigate and extend numeric patterns. Investigate the pattern with the following numbers and find the next three numbers of the pattern. So let's start with the first pattern that we are given. This is 5, 7, 9, and 11. So look at the pattern there and try and figure out or determine how we move from the first number to the next number. Can you figure it out? If you are saying that we should add 2 every time, then you are correct. Now, now that we know what is going on in this pattern, let us find the next three numbers of this pattern. So we have five, when we add two, we have seven, when we add two, we have nine, we add two, we have 11, and then what do we have when we add two? Yes, you are correct, we have 13. Then we are going to add two again, and what do we have after that? That is 15. Let's add two again, and what do we have? Yes, you are correct, we have 17. All right, so we have now written the next three terms of this number pattern. Let's look at another example. So now we have four, nine, 14, and 19. What do you think is the pattern here? How are we moving from the first number to the next number? Yes, you are correct. So if you said that we are adding five, you are absolutely correct and well done to you. From the first number to the next number, we are adding five. So we are counting in fives. We are starting there at four. So let's go on to finding the next three numbers of this pattern. So we have four. And to move to the next number, we have added 5. When we add 5 again from 9, we are going to land on 14. Then from 14, we add 5 again, and that gives us 19. So for us to find the next three numbers, we need to continue adding this 5. So when I add 5 from 19, what does it give me? Yes, it is 24. And when we add 5 again, what does it give me? That's 29. And for the last one that we've been asked for, from 29, we're going to add five again, and that gives us 34. So those are the next three numbers of our pattern. Let's continue and look at more examples of number patterns. So now we have 25, 23, and 21. What do you notice about this pattern? Yes we are now counting down. So we are no longer going to be adding. 
we are going to be subtracting. Can you figure out how, by how much, we are subtracting to get to the next number? Yes, you are correct. We are subtracting two every time. So let's find the next three numbers. So we have 25, we have 23, and we have 21. So if I subtract two from 21, what answer is it going to give me? Yes, it is going to give me 19. I'm going to subtract two again. That gives us 17. And when I subtract two again to get that third next number, then we are at 15. Okay. Let's look at a last example. We have 13, we have 9, and we have 5. We are also counting down here. But can you figure out by how much we are counting down? If you said that we are subtracting 4, then you are absolutely correct. Well done to you. So from 13, we subtract 4, it gives us 9. From 9, we subtract 4, it gives us 5. Now, from 5, we subtract 4, and it gives us 1. And then from 1, when we subtract 4, we are now going on to the negative numbers, and we get a negative 3. And then again, we continue subtracting 4. And do you remember how to subtract our integers? Yes, if your answer is negative 7, you are absolutely correct. Well done to you. So that was a bit of our pre-knowledge uh, practice. Let's go on to the keywords and language that we are going to be using in this lesson today. So we have a term of a sequence, and that is in 2, 4, 6. So in that pattern, the first term would be 2. So that is us focusing on the term of a sequence. Let's look at a constant difference. So when we are talking about a constant difference, we are talking about the second term minus the first term. Did you notice how in the practice we were finding the difference every time from each number? So when we take the second term and subtract the first term, then we are going to get a constant difference. It is the same if we take the third term and subtract the second term, then we are going to get a constant difference. Then when we are talking about the rule, it's more of a formula. So this would be our Tn, which represents our rule. And an example for that would be T, sorry, would be 2n, which is 2 multiplied by n. That is a rule for this pattern. And then let's look at a rule. So a rule is more of a formula. So for example, Tn is equals to 2n. That is the formula for this pattern that we just explained there above. So it would be the rule for that pattern. It is a formula or an equation, and it's not an expression. Okay, so those are the keywords that we are going to be using in this lesson. Let's quickly go to an ad break, and then we'll see you just now.